Hello, and welcome to EKU Then and Now. I'm Doug Whitlock, President of Eastern Kentucky University and your host for this month's program. Then and Now focuses on prominent EKU faculty, staff, and alumni who've had a meaningful involvement at Eastern during its history of more than 100 years. We asked them to comment on some of the vivid memories they have of EKU going back for decades. Our guest this month, Martha Mullen, spent 27 years as a faculty member in EKU's Department of Physical Education and as an administrator in the EKU Athletics Department. Her influence on high school and college athletics continues to be felt at EKU and across Kentucky. Her major administrative roles at Eastern were Associate Athletics Director for Internal Affairs and Assistant Athletics Director. She also served in leadership positions at the national level as a member of the Executive Board of the National Association of Collegiate Women's Athletics Administrators from 1986 to 92. She was one of the original recipients of the Lifetime Achievement Award from that organization. She also served on the Ohio Valley Conference Hall of Fame and 40th Anniversary Committees. With the NCAA, she also served as a member of that organization's track and field uh, committee. A past president of the Citizens for Sports Equity and the Kentucky Women's Intercollegiate Conference, Martha received the KWIC Honor Award in 1984 for outstanding service to women's intercollegiate athletics in Kentucky. In 2008, she was inducted into the EKU Athletics Hall of Fame. Martha, welcome. And uh, you know, it's not often I get to talk to a to a former colleague who's also such a good friend. So, thank you, uh, pleasure to have you here today. Thank why don't you, Why don't we start by when when you first came to EKU uh, in what year? 1969. And what was your role at at that time? I came as a, an assistant professor of physical education, and as tennis coach, I was assigned tennis for coaching at that time. So and we didn't have that in our little little intro, but I will, you know, I, I, I remember you as a uh, uh, as a tennis coach. As I, as I recall, one of our uh, very fine uh, grads and, uh, and and current member of the EKU Foundation Board, uh, Barbara Rickey. Was one of was on one of your teams? Am sure. I remembering that correctly? Or yes, incorrect? you are. Yes. You can't forget Laura. No. Yeah. And I, I, I asked you before we got started uh, about Miss Gertrude Hood because in in many respects uh, Gertrude Hood really uh, was the uh, the parent, if you will, of of women's athletics uh, at Eastern for and and was really the the moving force behind the. The Women's Athletics Association, which was the framework for club sports and a lot of activities uh, at, at at EKU, D describe the right. when you describe the uh, was, was she still around when you came? Yes, she was. Yes, she was. She was teaching health education at that time, and so she wasn't in the same building. We didn't have offices in the same building, but of course she was a legend, and uh, she's particularly noted, I think, for her. Uh, inclusion of field hockey in this part of the world uh, as a sport to be taught girls who were going to be teachers yes. of physical education. And uh, I've seen a picture of that. I don't know if you have, but it's, she has this enormous squad. I mean, it, it must have been 35 people yes, at absolutely. that time. Of course, she was here on campus and, a, and, a, and as you say, a legend. Uh, when I was a student, uh, beginning in 1961, and then was still here uh, when I came back from the Army in 1968. And I can't remember for sure, it was probably Don Feltner, uh, but someone suggested that, that I arrange to sit by Miss Hood uh, at things like summer commencement and other you know, uh, uh, events where you were in full academic regalia. And I did that and I found out why that suggestion was made. In her master's robe, and you know those robes have those long, <laughs> Uh, pointed uh, uh, pocket-like things on the ends of the sleeves, she would come with those stuff full of crackers and candy bars <laughs> and chewing gum, and and whoever sat by Miss Hood at those uh, at those events never went uh, never went hungry. Uh, you know, I I was always taken by the fact, and I and I'm not sure really how many people are, are even at Eastern. Uh, 
uh, are aware of the significant leadership role uh, that some people at Eastern took uh, in the development and the maturation of intercollegiate athletic opportunities uh, for women. And certainly one of those people is our old colleague, the, uh, the late Ann Euler. Uh, reflect for us for, for a few minutes about the, the, the role that, uh, that Ann played. Ann came to Eastern, I think it was 1965. And at that time, uh, sports were being, you know, participated in as a club sport level run by students. And according to uh, Dorothy Kirkpatrick, whom I talked with a couple of weeks ago, at that time, uh, she did away with the WAA, the Women's Athletic Organization, and said that it needed um, to have um, supervision, more direct supervision by faculty uh, to make it better. And uh, that was a shock to, to the people who were there and whatnot, but nonetheless, that's what happened. And I think when that happened, it gave it a certain status and did, and um, then the faculty who were assigned to WAA were then um, asked to coach more directly, and other members of the department were assigned teams to coach, and Ann, having come from a background in Indiana where, you know, girls basketball in high school had been played, and uh, a graduate of Columbia where there was the whole emphasis of physical activity being based on a pyramid of a basal uh, physical education training, then intramurals for those people who wanted that uh, experience, and then for the, the gifted, there was athletics. And so her mission, I guess, when she came in her mind was to establish that three-tiered concept of, of opportunity for girls to play. And we all came up during that time thinking the same thing. So at that time, the prevailing philosophy about sport and collegiate sport and women were, was that modem. And that was really the, the, the era in which we saw women's athletics at EKU evolve from that club-based student organization model over, over a several year period of time into uh, an intercollegiate athletics uh, where the you know where the women's teams include the, the tennis team that you coached mm -hmm. uh, and others uh, participated in a true intercollegiate uh, model with other institutions and was it about that time that the KWIC the Kentucky Women's Intercollegiate Athletics Conference developed? Yeah it yes it was it uh, I think that time was 1971-72. Um, at the time when the club sports were being uh, strengthened through her particular leadership, uh, there was an intercollegiate a coordinator appointed within her department. She was chair of the Department of Physical Education for Women. And uh, since that's where all the sports activity was, she appointed a coordinator of intercollegiate athletics. And that coordinator um, got the faculty involved in scheduling uh, schools to play in the various sports. At that time, there was tennis, field hockey, basketball, gymnastics, uh, volleyball, track, or some track. And uh, that coordinator then had to have these very good contacts within those other schools in the state. And so there was a natural evolution from those coordinators into this uh, Kentucky Women's Intercollegiate Conference, whereby competition could be better governed. And at that time, uh, the roots of K uh, AIW, Association of Intercollegiate Athletics for Women, was coming into play nationally. And so as this fomented, for want of a better term, uh, it wound up being states hooked up through regions through a national organization.